This video is brought to you by Cool Green Clothing coming straight up out of that DMV. You know what it is. This that Baltimore designer right here. Come on now. Come and show some love and show some support. Go online right now. CoolGreenClothing.com and make your purchase. Oh yeah, by the way, if you ain't cool and getting the green, you're in a way. And that's just basic. I, I. What's going on, YouTube fam? It's your boy Tony two times, and we back with another episode of the Baltimore Way, man. Before I start, be sure to tap that like button. Definitely watch this video to the end to hear the full story and all the details in the case. For the day one fam, y'all already know it's all love. Thanks for tuning back into another episode. If you're new to the channel and you're feeling the content, feel free to subscribe. Definitely hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time we drop a new video. Oh yeah, feel free to share the channel with your peoples. Everybody is welcome. Let me take a little time out to give a special shout out to Miss Angela Corbett for always supporting the channel, always showing love and sending blessings. I'm sending blessings back your way. Before we get into what y'all came to see, I wanna give a little disclaimer. For y'all that's new to the channel, the reason we cover these stories is not to offend nobody, not to talk down on nobody. We not no better and nobody we cover. We all one step away from being a hood tales or doing something that can put us in the same kind of situation. I spoke on my story, my struggles. If you go back and check past videos, my own family. I know dealing with loss of life is a touchy subject. And for the families out here, I know it's two sides to every story. We don't do this for likes and views. I take time out. I do my research for the people that send me the stories. I make sure I can validate the information. Everything is done with compassion. We take pride in what we do. And for everybody out there, we just want to be the voice to the voiceless. But with that being said, let's get right into what y'all came to see. Mental health. We all know how important it is to make sure your mind is right and to try to take care of yourself. Because more than likely, if your mental is failing, then you can't really operate, come out here and live a normal life. It's been a debate, especially amongst black men and women. Do we take our mental health seriously? A lot of us live with trauma, whether it comes from childhood, things that happened to us, stuff we might have saw that we buried so deep into the back of our minds, it seems like it doesn't even exist. Most of us are not with going to therapy. A lot of people will suggest paying someone thousands of dollars to poke around in your head and to point out your issues when they probably have issues themselves. So we bury our pain and fight our demons daily the best way we know how, smiling through the trauma. I remember going to a doctor years ago and her asking me a few questions about my life before then diagnosing me with PTSD. I looked at her like, yeah, she geeking. I'm not a soldier out here fighting war, but she explained to me, even though I tried to put a wall up, the trauma, the pain and events in my life had took a toll on me. Even though I never went back, it led to me self-evaluating myself. Every day we all wake up and try to navigate this crazy world. Go out in public with people that have the same issues as us. And we all try to act like we good. Some say they are healed, but then you have others that probably will never heal because they have just been through too much. And when they get to their breaking point, the outcome can be tragic. And on this episode of the Baltimore Way, We'll be discussing a case of a man's breakdown on live that led to him confessing to slam multiple people. In January of this year, 31-year-old Antonio Huck was navigating life in Baltimore. Antonio seemed like everything was on the up and up. On the outside looking in, he seemed happy. He was in a relationship, had kids, and was living a regular life. But deep inside, every day was a struggle as the man was fighting demons. It would all come to a head when on January 20th, 2024, Antonio woke up and told his girlfriend, like, yo, we gone today. Letting the young lady know this would be his and her last day on earth. He asked her, like, should I drive off a bridge? Should I tie you to me or what? His girlfriend, Erica, tried to ask Antonio, like, what you talking about? She had watched for the last year as the man struggled with his mental health. She was usually able to calm him down, but this day was different. Scrapped up with a knife and gun, Antonio zapped out. 
stabbing Erica multiple times. All of this was taking place while the kids were in the other room sleep. Then he called the police. While in the house, Erica tried to stay strong and calm for the kids, letting Antonio know she needed his help. She was turning blue. As Baltimore County police responded to the home, Antonio let it be known he was holding everyone hostage and he wanted to talk to a negotiator. He would get on Instagram live and start talking to his followers. During the stream, he started referring to himself as Rambo and admitting to multiple murders and apologizing to one man in particular who was serving 115 years, Lowell Sterling. Letting it be known on Halloween night 2010, he took the life of a 16-year-old boy named Daquan Burks, and Sterling was jammed up for it. The incident Antonio was referring to was on October 31st, 2010. Daquan and two other teens were trick-or-treating in the 100 block of Twin Circle Way in Lansdowne, Baltimore County. Someone wearing a Hellraiser mask approached the group and let off multiple shots, hitting all three teens as they were walking on a bridge. Two of the teens would survive, but unfortunately, Daquan would pass away from his injuries. Police felt the shooting had something to do with beef between Cherry Hill and Baltimore Highlands because the bridge the teens were shot on connected the two neighborhoods. Later that night, after returning home with his mother from a Halloween party and trick-or-treating, 17-year-old Sterling Matthews was picked up. He was being accused of the shooting. Sterling let it be known it wasn't him, but he was still taken into custody, charged with the hit. Sticking to the code, he never gave no names and took the case to trial. His first trial was a hung jury, but on the second trial, Sterling was found guilty and sentenced to 115 years in prison. As Antonio kept speaking on the situation, he let it be known that his alter ego Rambo was responsible for bodies all over the city. While confessing, Erica was still in the house, trying to stay calm, fighting for her life. As everyone on live told Antonio, like, yo, chill. What you geeking for? He told his peoples, like it's over anyway, dummy. I'm gone today. As police waited outside the home, almost three hours had passed before Antonio agreed to let Erica and the kids go. They came out and she was rushed to a local hospital in critical condition from losing so much blood with 11 cut wounds. The kids were unharmed, but Antonio was still in the house with a gun. Unfortunately, the standoff would end with Antonio gone at 31 years old. It's been debates on was it self-inflicted or done by the police. But after the facts, it was more questions than answers. Like why did the man snap in the first place and if everything he was saying was true? As time went by, Erica sat down with the news. You could still see the wounds from her being locked in with Antonio. She explained that Antonio was the most loyal, caring, loving man she had ever met. But over the last year, he started struggling with his mental health. She let it be known. She advised him to get some help, but he was stubborn and told her he was all right. But then she described the other person, Rambo. She stated Rambo was evil, had no regard for life, and wanted her gun. She claimed Antonio would never hurt her, but Rambo would. After explaining the situation and how she tried to escape, she let it be known the only thing that kept her going was knowing the kids were in the other room so she couldn't stop fighting. But it was still one question about the slander of Daquan. Sterling's attorney let it be known. Antonio's live was a video confession, and the only reason Sterling remained quiet back then was to keep the no snitching code, but he always maintained his innocence. As of now, they are fighting for a new trial. His mother spoke to the news about that Halloween in 2010. She let it be known Sterling was with her all day, from the party to trick-or-treating. And there was no way he did the shooting. He never had a mask or anything like that. She stated the prosecutor's first statement at trial was we had no evidence. But even after a hung jury on the first trial, on the second one, they convicted Sterling. He spoke out, letting it be known he never shot Daquan. And he felt he deserved to be released after being falsely accused and sentenced to all them years. And now his family and lawyer are fighting for Sterling to come home. Rest in peace to Daquan and Antonio and any other person he mentioned that lost their life. This is a tough one. I pray Erica also finds the strength to heal after what she went through. A lot of us fight every day to keep our minds right. Like I always tell y'all, we are all one mistake and a bad decision away from being a hood tale. 
Nobody has it all together or is perfect. I advise anybody that feels like they are at their breaking point to talk to somebody. If not a therapist, because everyone doesn't have that kind of money, family, a close friend, somebody you can trust. But don't wait until it's too late. As far as Sterling, that's wild if Antonio did do that and bro serving all that time. We all know sometimes, as long as they get a conviction and can close the case file, that's all the courts care about. But I'm going to leave this one open for discussion. Y'all let me know what y'all think about the situation. Leave it in the comments. Yeah, man, this was a crazy story. But I ain't going to talk too much more about this one. Y'all definitely let me know what y'all think. I appreciate you if you made it to the end. This is another episode of The Baltimore Way. This your boy Tony two times. Y'all already know it's all love, fam. I'm out.